Since the 1800s, fighting and physicality have been huge parts of hockey. But where does an entertaining amount of being physical cross over into being dangerous and unnecessary? Is fighting an essential part of the sport in the modern day? Or is the game going soft? And in the words of Ryan Reeves, should we make hockey violent again? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Victoria, I talk all things Toronto sports, hockey and baseball from across the pond in Scotland. And for today's video, we're talking about violence and fighting in hockey, whether it's necessary, whether we're glorifying violence, all those kind of things. This was of course sparked by Ryan Reeves' recent comments about how we should make hockey violent again. It really encouraged a whole discussion on the topic of fighting and physicality in hockey and I'm really interested in that area so let's dive in, let's talk about that today. One of the main arguments for having a lot of violence and fighting within the game is just that it's tradition, it's the way it's always been. Hockey has always had had these things, it's an integral part of the sport. And this is true, fighting and violence in the game has always been a unique aspect of the sport. Even dating back to the early days of hockey, physicality has always been a huge part of the game. There was a degree of violence in the game back in the 19th century when the sport was sort of up and coming in Canada. One of the most common theories behind this physicality within the sport is just the fact that there were a lack of rules when the game started. This may have encouraged people to be more physically intimidating, have control. Basically there was just a lack of clarity on what the actual rules of the game were and so it's possible that a lot of the violence derived from that. Another theory is that it's to do with the poverty and the high crime rates that existed in Canada in the 19th century which spilled over into the sport itself and it's also thought that there was an influence from working class lacrosse players who transitioned over into hockey. During this time lacrosse adopted an amateur only policy in Canada and so those who were used to playing this quite violent game in that sport transitioned over into hockey and brought this tone of play with them. These are just a few of the theories but whatever the factors were behind the violence and physical presence in hockey, it's been there for forever. It's forever been there. As long as you can date back hockey, there has been aggression, violence, physicality, fighting, whatever you want to call it. This includes since the beginning of the NHL in 1917, there was definitely physical elements to the game back then too. And in 1922, the NHL introduced Rule 56. This formally regulated fighting or fisticuffs as it was called at the time which is just an old-fashioned word for fighting and the implementation of this in the NHL rulebook meant that rather than ejecting players from the game for fighting players would instead receive a five minute game penalty and this is what still stands today within the game. Fighting was less common from the 1920s through to the 1960s but when fights did happen they were very brutal, they were very very tough and author Rob Ross Bernstein said of the game's early years that it was probably more like rugby on skates than it was modern hockey. And then the 1977 movie Slapshot really encapsulated the tone of hockey of this era. During the 1980s, the average number of fights per game rose above 1.0, peaking at 1.17 in the 1983-84 season. The rise of enforcers, bench clearances and the number of penalty minutes saw this period of the 80s and 90s arguably the most violence focused period in hockey history. However, by the 2000s and the early 2010s, an increase in concentration on skill and skating ability meant the number of fights decreased significantly and this trend has continued on into the 2020s. Now currently, hockey is still known for its physicality which really does separate it from the majority of sports. However, brawls, enforcer roles and violence in general is less prevalent than in previous years and decades and eras of the game. Some people like the fact that there's less violence than before, some people miss the good old tough hockey days of how it was in the 80s and 90s. So let's just take a look at the pros and the cons of having fighting and just generally violent behaviour within the game of hockey. The first one in the pros column is as I've already mentioned, the fact that it's simply tradition. It's always been such a crucial element of hockey that if you remove it too much, are you removing 
part of the game itself and part of the sport. Some people would argue that if you are willing to remove this aspect of the sport, what else are you going to remove? How far do you take that? Do you make it a non-contact sport eventually? Which completely detracts, of course, from one of the most appealing parts of hockey. There's also an unwritten code of conduct which exists in the sport of hockey and a lot of people don't want to take that away. They want to keep the very traditional way of looking at the game. They want to keep all of those aspects. Arguably, it's the thing that hockey as a sport is most synonymous with is the fights. And so the removal of that could completely alter the image of what the entire sport looks like. So many will say that it's always been a part of the sport and it always should be. Another one in the pros column is that it increases entertainment value. Obviously there's that comedic line about I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. A lot of people really are enticed to go and watch in the game of hockey because of the physical elements. People want to see hard hits, they want to see fights, they want to see aggressive behaviour that in most other aspects of society we would all completely see as inappropriate and unacceptable. There are definitely people that see that as the most entertaining part of the game, that it's something really unique that doesn't exist in other sports, you know, baseball, basketball, American football, none of those sports allow this element of fighting and the really physical behaviour that hockey is associated with and it really does add entertainment value. I completely agree, I think that games are much more exciting if you've got a good fight in it. I absolutely love it. I think it also can rile up players if there's a fight breaks out. It really shows passion for the game. It can really inject some life into the game sometimes. It can really light a fire under the players. It can really do a lot to benefit the game value as a whole and as a fan watching that, of course you want to get your money's worth and you want to be entertained when you're going to watch the game and for a lot of people that involves fights and physical behaviour. And before anyone starts commenting right now, I'm not talking about dangerous and dirty behaviour in hits but I'll get to that in the next segment. Overall, fighting can really add to entertainment value, um, which is good for the league, of course, and it's good for the sport in general because people can be drawn in. It's a great marketing ploy. I must say, from, from a marketing perspective, it's a great ploy being able to promote that you can come watch this sport where there's fights allowed, you won't find that anywhere else. It's a unique selling point and it definitely brings fans and money and entertainment into the game. And the final one I've got listed for in the pros column is that it has the possibility to make the sport safer overall. Fighting is often seen as a way for players to police themselves and rather than letting officials dictate what is legal or illegal in a game, a team can respond and send a message by dropping the gloves or doing something physical just to get their point across. As we all know, sometimes officiating in games can be a little bit questionable and it does allow players to take matters into their own hands. A lot of fights often occur after there's been a dangerous hit made or sometimes a team can just change the whole momentum of the game by doing something physical, by fighting, by dropping the gloves, by making a hit, can change the entire game. It does allow a certain amount of game management to remain with the players rather than only the officials being able to dictate the game. And I do like to see a team being able to sort of manage the game a bit more themselves. I would hate to see that completely disappear. So it's definitely a compelling argument. In fact, I would argue that all of these points are compelling arguments for keeping fighting and physicality within the game of hockey. But we do have a couple counter arguments and the first of that is just the risk of concussion, the dangers of being violent. These are men with blades on their feet. It's a very fast paced game. It's a lot faster than it used to be back when it was the real physical era of hockey. The game has developed and sped up a lot since then. And so with that, the dangers have also increased. Meanwhile, the safety equipment hasn't really altered much. So the game's got quicker and tougher. Athletes are stronger, meaning that there's more danger involved, but the safety elements haven't really changed too much. Of course, equipment 
obviously technology does develop over the years, but fundamentally there haven't been an awful lot of changes in terms of what players wear that keeps up with how much the game itself has developed. And this can pose a real danger. The concussion rates, there's a lot of concussion in the NHL. There's a lot of concussion in hockey. This is severely detrimental to players' health. It also means that players, aside from the obvious health impact on the individual, it also means that teams are then missing key players because they're out with concussion. We've already seen with rugby players the correlation between things like dementia and Alzheimer's just from all those years playing in a tough sport and there being a lot of head contact. There is just, of course, a danger to individuals involved in playing the game this way and especially when it comes to more dangerous hits it's definitely a risk to the players and I, I don't ever want to see players getting hurt and I think that m most people or sensible people anyway would agree that while physicality can be a great thing you don't want to see anyone getting hurt ever and there is also the fact that it does glorify violence there's the potential for children to grow up idolising people who are constantly involved in fights. It's argued that it's maybe not a great role model for children. You need to make the line and the boundary very clear between what goes on on the ice versus what you do within society as a person because those two things can't cross over. You can't have people thinking that the way that you act on the ice during a game is an acceptable way to treat other people in real life. I don't think it's good in general to glorify violence. I think there's a lot of potentially detrimental impacts that can come with that and it is just one issue that a lot of people have with the level of violence and fighting and physicality within the game. Okay so those are the advantages and disadvantages to fighting and violence in hockey and just for this last bit I'm going to touch on a few things. I'm going to talk about fighting versus violence and then I'm going to share my thoughts on both Ryan Reeves and also the Morgan Riley suspension because I actually don't think I've talked about the Riley suspension in a video anywhere. I've talked about it on Twitter a little bit but I thought I'd share my thoughts because ultimately this is what inspired this week's video. So I feel like I have to touch on it. I think that fighting is great. A great fair fight where you're dropping the gloves, I think that's a fantastic bit of hockey. I would also argue that it's probably quite low risk to player health, but it also adds a lot of entertainment value to the game. I love a good fight, I never want to see that disappear from the game. I would be devastated if there were no more fights. I also don't take issue with clean hits, with plays that are fair or anything. However, violence in general, I'm a very non-violent person there's not a violent bone in my body and I think it's important to clarify the difference on my perspectives between the two because I love I love fighting and clean hits and I love the physical parts of the game it's what one of the things that really drew me into the sport in the first place however I don't like dangerous plays dirty hits things that just go out to injure players. I don't like intent to injure and my perspective on that varies drastically from things that I see as clean and fair. I love the idea of teams being able to manage the game a bit themselves and being able to send a message but I think there's a right way of doing that. I don't think it's as black and white as just saying that violence is violence. I think it depends on the acts themselves, it depends the scenario, it depends on the players, it really it is quite subjective I suppose but I love fighting and I love fair physicality in the game but I don't like anything that's out to hurt anyone else intentionally or anything that's really dangerous or dirty. The Morgan Riley suspension. I think that Morgan Riley deserved, I should probably preface this, I, in my head I'm like everyone who watched this will watch the NHL but there's maybe some people that don't. So on February 10th the Toronto Maple Leafs played the Ottawa Senators and at the end of the game the scoreline was 4-3 to Ottawa and Ridley Gregg in the very last moments of the game saw the empty net opportunity and he took a slap shot into the empty netter and Leafs defenseman Morgan Riley took exception to this and he cross-checked him. The Department of Player Safety gave Morgan Riley a five game suspension for this cross-check and it's caused a lot of debate basically but it's the Leafs. When does anything about the Leafs not cause a debate and discussion? I think that Morgan Riley deserved a suspension 
I thought that like two or three games would have been fair. Matthews got two games for the cross check in the Buffalo game, in that outdoor game last year. I thought it would have been two or three games. He's not a repeat offender, he's not a dirty player. He definitely deserves a suspension though because you can't go around cross-checking people like that. There's obvious dangers involved in that. I like the intention behind sending a message. I'm glad there was a response because I like to see passionate people. I like to see players that aren't soft and that care about their team. But I really wish he'd used like his hands rather than cross-checking. I can't defend that cross-check because it it was it was bad he shouldn't have done it he deserves a suspension for it and those are really my thoughts on the matter of course as i'm filming this morgan riley's suspension is now up which i can't believe the leaves are five and all without him crazy crazy um <laughs> ridiculous also just on that note sorry this is a tangent but as you know there's always a tangent in my videos uh anyone that's saying that we don't need morgan riley now because they've won every game without him just stop just stop. My memory card. My memory card filled up there. <laughs> God, I need to stop talking. The team definitely have a lot of value in Morgan Riley, and I think what's happened in these games is just that the players haven't been relying on Morgan Riley because there's definitely defensive gaps in the team, and because they're not like relying on him, I feel like they've all been pulling their weight, and that's why they've been winning. But that's just my thoughts, and also that's not the topic of today's video. I'm sorry, I just, I, I went on a tangent there, but whatever, it's fine. And so, of course, in response to the Morgan Riley suspension, Ryan Reeves came out and said that he thinks that basically hockey isn't violent enough again. He said, let's make hockey violent again. And he said to get it tattooed on him or something like that, which of course received a lot of backlash from people. Fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I think Ryan Reeves has a very old school perspective on hockey. I think he's seeing it through a lens that is a little different to what other people are seeing. And of course, it's not like Ryan Reeves was playing in the NHL in the 1990s, you know, like he's not, he's, he's definitely not that old. I also think that the role of the enforcer is kind of obsolete, not completely, but it's definitely not the same as it once was and so as someone who has based their career off of more of an enforcer role his skills are very much based in physicality I think it's just the way that he perceives things and he's almost trying to defend maybe his role in hockey and in the league I think that's what it is but I don't think it's fair to say that the game isn't physical sorry I need a drink I've been talking for a long time because the game is still very physical and it's more physical than most sports as well. So it really still is violent and it just needs to be the right kind of violence. So my thoughts overall, I think that fighting and violence, as long as it's clean and fair, is great within the sport and I'd hate to see it disappear because I think it's an element that really attracts people to the game and I think it's a unique element of hockey as well. However, I will never be in favour of anyone intending to injure anyone else. I don't like dangerous plays and dirty hits. And there is a fine line between the two, I know, but that's just sort of how I perceive them. But let me know, what do you think? Do you think that hockey should be more violent? Do you think that it's at a good level right now? I think the NHL has a pretty good level of violence right now. I think it's not too over the top. There's not too much danger involved in it, but it's also not a soft non-contact game, which I would hate it to be. I think there's a decent amount of good fights in it. I think we're in a quite good middle ground. So let me know what you think. Do you think that hockey needs to be more aggressive and violent like it once was? Do you think that it needs to be less violent than it is right now? Or are you happy with it as it is? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really intrigued to hear what people think on this because it is quite a hot topic. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content because it means the absolute world to me. This is like the best hobby in the entire world. And I'll be back soon with more hockey chats from across the pond. Bye guys. Yeah.